welcome to this foundation course uh, live Q&A. Uh, so we have today uh, with me uh, our course, direct, uh, course leader, Fiona Howells. Hello, Fiona. Hello. Um, we have Sadaf Bunjo, and Sadaf is our current student on the foundation program. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, we have uh, James McCarthy. James is our admissions manager. Hello, James. Uh, we have Agata Mazokiewicz. Agata is our head of marketing and student recruitment. Hello. Uh, and myself, Sandra Bonfrates. I'm the marketing manager. You might have received an email from me inviting you to this event today. So I guess it's nice to put my face to the email. Mm -hmm. uh, so welcome to this event. Uh, we will start with a short presentation um, uh, about the, the, the college. Uh, so if some of you attended one of our open events, you might already know the information. It's much shorter. And then we will move on to some slides that Fiona will uh, talk about the course and uh, she, she will show you some current student work and as well we will have a set up uh, with us today she will be answering questions so at the end uh, of our presentation we would be open to your um, uh, queries questions anything you might would like to know about the course if there is anyone in here today with us who has already applied but perhaps have not committed themselves yet, please let us know. Uh, that would be great to know that you're on board. Uh, if there's anyone who's got an offer, please let us know. If you're completely new, also please let us know and um, ask us questions. I will be able to unmute you at the end of the session so you can actually speak and, 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 and ask us anything you wish. Okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna share my screen and... Um, uh, hopefully start the presentation. Uh, sorry, seems to be an issue <laughs> with my presentation. Okay, let's try again. Uh, okay. Right, can everybody see that? Yes, we can. Right. Can you see gray screens on your screens? And I should yes, minimize. Can. Sorry? Yes, we can. Okay, so I'm gonna minimize my view so you can actually see the presentation correctly. So um, we'll start with a little uh, introduction to the college. Um, and uh, just to let you know, uh, Condenas College is part of the uh, a wider corporation called Condé Nast, if, and if some of you didn't know about it, Condé Nast is a global organization, media and entertainment and a news organization that uh, operates in 31 markets. And as you can see, uh, Condé Nast produces quite a few titles, uh, some perhaps very well known like Vogue, GQ, um, Glamour, some maybe a little bit less, uh, like Cucina Italiana, uh, New Yorker. Um, and because of that kind of connection with the industry, we are, are privileged and I guess we are very lucky to, to be part of that uh, kind of global insights, global trends, uh, view of, of what's happening right now in the, in the industry, in the fashion world, uh, the techni technological trends of, of the print media, uh, journalism, and everything that happens currently um, in the actual Condé Nast, we are very much up to date with it and we try to incorporate that into our teaching and expose you to those trends and to those news. Uh, so who we are, as I mentioned, we are part of the Condé Nast group um, and through those links and the expertise with, uh, with, with the industry, we can uh, provide you with the excellence in education and, and uh, provide you with the insights, with the contacts, with the um, any, any information that you might like to find out about what it's like to study with us and then what it's like to actually work in that media industry. Um, Fiona, when it, we get to her, probably she will hopefully say a bit more about herself so you can find out more about Fiona's background and, and, and what she does with us. But overall, our academics are award-winning academics and they have industry 
um, expertise. So they practicing, so they, they not don't just teach in the college and are academic. They actually um, uh, write articles. They have enterprises. They run businesses. They are creative directors or stylists. So everybody is actually part of the industry as well as brings that knowledge and expertise back to the college to teach our students. Um, the college is very boutique. It has got a, a, a small size, I would say, in terms of the um, uh, physical uh, presence. However, because of that, that boutique experience, you will be exposed to um, getting to know everybody and you will be known by name. And because of that, you will have uh, an opportunity to, to actually network with students across other cohorts and other courses work together, learn from each other, and and uh, have have an opportunity to build that network beyond the college's wall when you actually graduate. So it's not a new university style of thousands of people. It's in hundreds at the time, probably when you are with us, uh, uh, and and it gives you a little bit more nurturing and and intimate environment to study. Um, I mentioned the unrivaled industry access, so we are connected with the Condé Nast and as part of that connection uh, and your course, you will actually meet industry speakers and, and uh, meet people from Condé Nast who will come to the college and, and have uh, um, lectures given to you or projects that you might be working on or visiting them in the workspace. Um, I guess we we'll talk a little bit more about that later on, and I'm sure Fiona will tell you as well uh, a little bit more as well uh, as to what to expect. You will also have a career support, and I'm not going to uh, expand a lot on that topic because Fiona will talk about this quite a lot on one of her slides. Uh, so that's an opportunity for you to actually also work on your career progression or, or educational progression from the foundation course. Um, um, so just to show you a little bit more of, of our college, uh, this is pretty much how it, how it looks. It's a white canvas, as we call it, uh, allowing for your creativity. It's very uh, collaborative style of teaching, uh, net, networking, uh, in conversational, where we give you an opportunity to explore yourself, to actually learn from each other, and also be very creative in your individual ways which also will show, we will show you through the students' work. On the left-hand side, you can see our library. So the uh, college has got a, a library of over 200 books, which you will be able to, to, to use, to borrow, to study from. We also have uh, um, Vogue archives that you can uh, reference your work to view. And those books cannot be taken out of the college, but can be viewed in the college. We also have uh, online resources. We have you have access to media and 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 fashion journals. Uh, so you have quite a lot of resources to use during your studies. We wouldn't expect you to have anything uh, prior your your study in terms of books or 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 software knowledge or, of, of that sort. Everything will be available to you during the time with us. Uh, so just to mention a little bit more about the industry guest speakers, um, so apart from your weekly, um, every week, every Wednesday, if I believe uh, in the afternoon, you have industry guest speaker. And uh, for instance, this year we had two quite well-known people. We had Anna Winter who came uh, on, to, on the Zoom to speak to our uh, college students at the beginning of the autumn term. And then we had Stella McCartney who spoke to the students at the beginning of January term. Um, so this is quite, these are a couple of well-known names, but you will also hear from maybe less known names, however, equally impactful people. So there will be creative directors, they could be editors, there could be people who actually work in uh, marketing, in social media, people who are um, running their own businesses. So they will be coming and talking to you about the PR products, uh, marketing. There are people coming from every angle of the industry with different wealth of experience and expertise that we will be exposing you to in order for you to learn from the best. Um, and I will show you now a video of 
our student work. So this is a, a final year portfolio video. This is also accessible on our website. So if you want to actually view in detail project of some students, by all means, uh, visit the, the homepage and there is a link to the portfolio student portfolio page. But as part of this video, you will also be able to see foundation students work from year 2019 2020. Uh, so uh, you can actually see the level of work that is being produced by our students. Okay, I'm going to play the video. To you, Fiona. Um, uh... Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you for showing us those wonderful slides and the films of all the students' work. It's really inspiring. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm Fiona Howells. I'm the course leader on uh, the Bow Foundation program. Um, Sandra wanted me to say a few words about myself. Um, well, I trained at Lenten College of Fashion. And I've worked in fashion all my life. That's all I've done. <laughs> I've worked as a fashion designer, a product developer, a buyer, a stylist, a creative director. <laughs> so I've got extensive experience working in fashion. So I was asked to um, run this course um, about over a year ago now. So it's, the course has only been going now for two years. It's, it's in its second year at the moment. And the course is three terms in length. So it's about nine months in length. And you've got three contact days a week, but it's still a full-time course. So there'll be two days of directed and independent study when you're on the course. So don't think just because you've got three contact days, it's only three days a week. It is actually a five day week because you are expected to work 
on those, um, you know, those days where you're not in the college. As Sadaf, who's a student on, a current student on the course, I'm sure will tell you soon. Um, thank you, Sadaf, for joining us as well, because it's always nice to hear about the course from a student perspective rather than from a lecturer's. Okay, so the qualification level is a level three, uh, and the course is worth 120 credits. Okay, thanks, Sandra. If I could have the next slide. So the whole inspiration for the course uh, came from this book, which was a limited edition book, uh, Vogue, Voice of the Century. Um, as many of you are probably aware, British Vogue was established and founded in 19, uh, sorry, yeah, 1916. Uh, so to celebrate its centenary, this book was published um, and the course has really been devised from the pages of this book. Um, so the course has taken inspiration from key fashion illustrators, fashion photographers, stylists, mm. fashion designers that have worked for Vogue. Um, and also what the course does is examine uh, historical and cultural events that impact, have impacted on fashion through the decades, exploring art movements and their effect on visual culture and examining the change in cover layouts, fonts, graphics, and typography within Vogue that has also helped students to actually create their own, give them ideas and create their own sort of visual style and identity. Thank you, Sandra. So the course really serves as a broad introduction to the creative industries. It's very um, creative and practice based. Um, and each week students have talks from industry speakers who provide a real insight to the various disciplines within fashion. So within the creative industries, we have um, specialists that come in and um, talk to the students about their disciplines so that students can get a real idea and a real insight into the various careers within fashion. Um, because obviously the foundation course really is your sort of introduction and it's helping you to establish where you want to be as a creative and where you'd like to progress onto in terms of a degree course. So it's quite broad in its topics and also in its um, creative approach. So the students get to test out different areas of fashion so they can then make an informed choice when they want to progress on to higher education and university. So I would say the course is very creative and practice-based and students participate in you know, image making, visual communication. They look at fashion media representation, promotional content. Um, they also do fashion photography because we've got a studio, uh, a photographic studio in the college. So students can access that and book that at any time. We have um, sessions on styling and they learn about digital design software uh, such as Photoshop. So they're able to you know, um, produce graphics, etc., and learn how to lay out their work professionally. Also study art and design movements and how they influence fashion because that's important to understand the historic context behind a lot of fashion photographers, photographers work. And all this helps them to build a creative portfolio that they can then take on to interviews uh, for higher education courses or for internships should they want to go on to an internship after the course. Thanks, Sandra. Okay, so, oops, sorry about that. So the focus really is on uh, career progression and you know, obviously higher education as well. So the course really serves as an introduction to the fashion, fashion industry and we support you for that higher education progression. We show you how to uh, research, how to um, you, um, obtain study skills, academic skills, how to develop your, your creative portfolio and give you all the options really for your next steps within fashion. Thanks, Sandra. We also provide um, strong career support, um, CV sessions. We help students to identify their personal strengths. I think it's really a course designed to sort of help you establish where you want to be as a creative. 
So by testing out in the different modules, all these different skills, you can find the strengths, your strengths, and where you want to be as a creative. So I would say the course really is ideal for, you know, school leavers and also for mature students returning to education who want to follow a career in fashion because it acts as a perfect bridge between school and university. Um, within it as well, we help you to, to develop presentation skills, to, to develop a portfolio for your chosen pathway and to develop personal branding through an online platform. So all of these things are sort of, you know, weekly sessions that we have with the students to help them sort of build a really strong portfolio for their career progression and their higher education pathway that they decide which one they want to go on to. Thanks, Sandra. So the program is structured so that we have five, we have five modules running uh, throughout the year. The first one, is um, in term one, creative industries. Then we have design and visual culture, and then we have fashion media and communication. The multimedia practice and independent fashion portfolio are long and thin, so they run throughout the year. <clears throat> um, within the creative industries, this is where the students are sort of exposed to key professionals and have lots of industry talks. Um, to enable them to get a real sense of where they'd like to pitch themselves um, as they develop onto higher education courses. Design and visual culture is where students go out to exhibitions. We have students that attend Design Museum, v &A, Tate Modern, Somerset House. So we go to various art galleries and fashion photography exhibitions to examine the work of creative artists. And fashion media and communication, we examine the role of fashion media in particular Vogue and its development throughout the decades. And we also examine current issues in fashion, addressing ethical issues within fashion, such as sustainability, consumerism and overconsumption. And then the longer modules focus really on creative portfolio. For example, multimedia practice is where students do uh, a lot of photography and illustration. So they'll be using, um, learning how to use Adobe programs such as Photoshop and InDesign, as well as other digital platforms such as ReadyMax. So students do fashion photography, they do some styling, and they create their own photo shoots and magazine design. And then within the independent fashion portfolio, that's where they decide where they want to be as a sort of creative. Uh, and so they pick a topic of their choice that they can explore and really to really highlight their creative skills. Thanks, Sandra. So uh, on these next few slides, I've got some examples of current students' work. Um, so I've got you work here from Gabriel and Max. Unfortunately, Gabriel can't be with us today. I was hoping he, he could come and talk about his work. But uh, unfortunately, he's having Zoom issues. <laughs> so, um, yeah, in fashion, media and communication, we look at sort of current issues within fashion. And obviously, um, there's a lot of talk about stereo, stereotypes, traditional uh, stereotypes of masculinity. And so students were asked to sort of look at this, really research it, create mood boards, and then create their own cover of Vogue, GQ, Love, to actually highlight the issue that they were addressing. And uh, Gabriel here has um, picked a very good title, Let's Eradicate Toxic Masculinity, which is quite a striking cover. And Max has produced this, The Modern Man, and he's put a little star in the bottom called You're Enough. And when he explained about this, he said that often um, as a, when he was growing up, in school, there was this sort of validation with stars when he was growing up, you know, silver stars. So he wanted to highlight that you don't really need validation, that you are enough, uh, which I thought was quite poignant in terms of his explanation of it. And then Gabriel has done another lovely uh, cover here uh, with love cover with makeup smudged on his face. I think that's a fantastic cover as well. Thank you, Sandra.
Okay, so now um, on fashion media and communication, here are some trend pages. And Sadaf, who we have with us, has actually created one of these. So I would, I would love to put the mic over to you, Sadaf, if you don't mind. <laughs> yes. Of course. So for this assignment, we had to create a trend for the new season. And we had to use several resources like WG, WGSN, which you guys will learn about soon. And we had to create trend pages that would like come out of Vogue magazine. So I chose Electric Blue and you have to come up with head and cells. So this is a great task to sort of do like mock-ups of if you want to go into editorial, which is this course has wide a wide variety of disciplines you can go into. So if anyone's interested in editorial, tasks like these would be amazing for you. So they were a lot of fun to just pick out, like look at, use resources like Vogue Runway and pick out like different sort of trends that you could see and spot stuff. So if you really love editorial, you will love this uh, module. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, Sadaf. I think it was a really striking uh, trend page that you actually created here. And on the left, we have by Alice Sandal, uh, eat your greens, wear your greens, um, which again was a very striking uh, double page spread for a magazine. Great, thank you, Sandra. Now I've got some, that was current work. This is work from last year uh, from the multimedia practice module uh, where they do fashion photography. And um, I haven't got any street style ones in here, but they do street style, so they do some on location. Oh, hello, Gabriel, you've just missed your slides. <laughs> we can go back to it so you can talk about it. Um, let me just finish this one. So there's a still, so you do still life. Uh, so you do a lot still life, uh, product placement. Um, also classic photo shoots where students will work in groups to create a photo shoot. Now, last year we were in a lockdown when the classic photo shoot was happening and students had to work in groups across Zoom, across the world actually. Uh, so Brooke was in California, Erica was in Switzerland, and one of the other students was in Brazil. Uh, so they were working collaboratively across the globe on this and taking photos of each other over FaceTime. I mean, I often, you know, I said to them at the time, in terms of, you know, you can see it as a negative, but also you can see it as a challenge. So when these things happen, you can actually show your level of creativity by overcoming the challenges. So, and I think they really rose to the challenge uh, last year and they have this year as well, I must say. Um, and then on the far right, we've got a shot from Caroline Fitzsimmons for a fashion portfolio, which she concentrated on beauty products and created a website um, that was devoted to beauty and yoga and lifestyle, which was pretty amazing. Okay, Sandra, do you want to just go back a slide? Is that okay? So we can just hear- Absolutely. Hello, Gabrielle. <laughs> do you want to talk about your covers, Gabriel? Is that okay? Yeah, hi, sorry I was late. I've got internet connection issues. Um, yeah, we had to do a cover um, inspired by um, Love magazine or GQ or Vogue. Um, I decided to take inspiration from the James Charles um, cover that was in Vogue Portugal. Um, I decided to do a love cover theme for that um, using Photoshop techniques that we'd been using in class. Um, and we used, I had to use a studio myself at home because um, it was during the lockdown period. And I had to use myself as a model because it was either me or my father. Um, and he wasn't up for it, so it was just myself. Um, and then for the GQ one as well, um, I wanted um, to quite well wear quite a feminine outfit, but with quite strong um, features and the, the tones that we used, um, and again, using Photoshop. Um, and yeah, that's, that was my GQ cover. It's brilliant. I absolutely love it, Gabriel. Oh, thank it's you. It's very striking. It's very <laughs> striking. Yeah, I think you should pitch it to someone in GQ. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, going Thank forward. Thank you, Sandra. Okay, yes, we yeah we finished that. Yes, so also within multimedia practice, we ask students to experiment 
with image making and that could be through sort of digital collage or hand rendered collage. It can be actually through illustration. Um, we look at various different uh, fashion illustrators and creatives and how they express themselves through image making. So um, students have fun with this. I've inserted one of Laura's from this year um, on the left. Um, and then in the center here, we've got a collage from Noor Latif from last year. And her collage in mixed media was inspired by the um, style of the artist Quentin Jones, who's a very established um, creative working in the fields of fashion illustration, and she's worked with huge brands. Um, and then Willows on the far right, where she's actually um, inserted a photograph of herself, beautiful um, image, and then she's actually illustrated the background. So we experiment a lot with different processes so the students can create really striking imagery. I think we've got some more on the next slide as well, haven't we, Sandra? Yeah, here are some other images from the students from last year and this year. I've uh, got Sonia's here on the left, uh, Caroline's that's um, sort of pen and ink. And then Max has worked in uh, Photoshop to create this image. He's hand drew it and then he's worked in Photoshop. And then Jensen has worked with some hand rendered techniques, all creating sort of amazing illustrations because fashion illustration has become, has a sort of renaissance in terms of um, image, you know, image creation. It's being featured a lot more on magazines. If you think of the Vogue Italia, um, which had all illustrated um, images in it last year. So, yeah, so we, we, we look at that as well as making sort of still life fashion photography, we're constantly trying to make the images look really edgy and fashion forward. Thanks, Sandra. Oh, yes. And here we have um, from the creative industry, we also look at fashion film. A lot of the students have created films this, this, this year. Uh, we worked with um, the creative team at TikTok this year with Nova Danzo and the creative team. So the students all created TikTok physios, which I haven't got in here in the presentation, I'm afraid, but they are really funny and hilarious and, and fun. Um, so maybe I'll try and, you know, they don't really, I think they're a bit shy. They don't want to share them with me. <laughs> but anyway, um, I'll try and retrieve them. I'm hoping that uh, we will have some of the student work uploaded soon to our yes. student portfolio page on the web page. So I'm sure there will be some sneak peeks. Look out for some TikToks on there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they, they presented the creative team at TikTok and they were really impressed with the work that was created. They said it was very professional and they could see it trending and taking off overnight. Uh, I think uh, some of the students already grown quite a lot of followers on TikTok because of the TikToks that they've done. But also apart from that, we've done some fashion films uh, and the students have created, um, they've done the creative direction. They've often starred in them themselves, styled them. Uh, and this is just one of them uh, from last term. And this is Theodore's. When the urban jungle drags me into its depths, I break free. I take myself home to reconnect with my essence. That's my time alone. It's the place where I wove my connection with nature and I simply cannot break it. It provides me with pure inspiration, free from influence and pollution, free from convention and delusion. In turn, I give back to it through the improvement of its living, providing it with new life. My creative sense is so awake around here. I see patterns and shapes, I see texture, I see colors so effortlessly sublime, far from the conventions and the man-made perfections. That said, my challenge is to bring my inner sense of creation to life, channeling my inspiration for fashion, because that is my freedom. That. Um, I mean, oh, <laughs> he narrated. He narrated it himself, and obviously, he created. He wrote 
that um, sort of poem himself. So, you know, it was a lot of work that went into that. We were very impressed with the- I album. just maybe want to do a little bit of um, uh, a question to, to both students to, that are here today, because you mentioned the work with TikTok and, and, and the video production. Do you have any um, like feedback from that project, guys, that you could share with the audience as to you know what was expected of you? What did you learn from it? Sure. Um, from the project, we were expected to sort of choose a discipline within the industry and pick uh, pick a creative project to go with that. So we were sort of it was we had a lot of freedom with this project. We could choose whatever discipline we want and accompany with any creative project you want. So it's not, this course is not very restricted. So if people like to like go their own way or have fun with like different like disciplines, this this um, pro this project was a lot of fun, especially because um, I did design. So um, we all got to choose our own discipline. And I like Theo and a couple of students did fashion film it was like just a great opportunity to have fun with it. You know, we were just expected to have fun. So awesome. Gabriel, do you want to add to that? Particularly about, I mean, obviously this was this was the creative industries module, but then you had that separate TikTok, um, you know, brief. Do you want to just add something about the, the you know, the TikTok brief? What you yeah, learned? I mean, if, to have that experience with TikTok, I mean, it's a growing brand. It's it's very well known. It's growing in popularity ever so. I mean, all the time, isn't it really? So mm. to have that experience with um, Nova, like we did, um, and yeah, we had a lot of creative freedom. I mean, I did um, a dance TikTok, then I did a fashion TikTok with all of the students, um, and then I did a, a comedic TikTok. So um, yeah, you, we got to do a variety of things, and it was an amazing opportunity to have. Great, so glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay, so on to the fi uh, final project, Fashion Portfolio. I haven't got any stu the current student work in here at the moment because they're obviously still working on their independent fashion uh, portfolios, which they'll actually um, be submitting in a few weeks time and having an exhibition at the end of it. But this is one from last year, which was um, Hammers. And obviously we were in a lockdown at that time uh, and Hamra wanted to do a sort of lookbook website uh, that focused on a lot of the styling that she was creating. And also she was creating the sort of photo shoots uh, herself. So she called it My Muse in My Room. Um, and she was using her sort of uh, one of her relatives to actually shoot um, the photography. So yeah, it was, you know, in, in terms of not being able to use a studio and having to do it in her own home, she did exceptionally well, uh, given the circumstances, and created some great styling shots, actually, as well. Thanks, Sandra. And then last year, obviously, um, we couldn't have a physical exhibition, but we are having one this year, aren't we, guys? Uh, which the students are furiously getting ready for, um, which is on the 25th of June this year. Uh, so last year, um, they basically, we gave them artistic license that they could actually create their own little virtual exhibition. Um, so if they wanted to take over a gallery, <laughs> <laughs> they could. Um, so obviously, um, I, when I showed this to our current students, I had to say, uh, I had to give them the proviso, you know, you're not going to have a gallery space, you are going to have an exhibition space with a stand, etc. Because um, I probably, they probably looked at this and thinking, oh, great, fab. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so they were given artistic license last year. This is Jack's simulated exhibition plan. And Jack um, was an exceptional photographer. And he has now gone on to um, study BA fashion photography at uh, Lenza College of Fashion. So he's progressed onwards and is really enjoying it. But he really enjoyed uh, a lot of the aspects of the course and really found his 
I guess he found his real sort of like identity in terms of visual communicating, in terms of what he wanted to, to portray. He was very influenced by Polo Reversi and he wanted to create those sort of really quite almost like x-ray images and blurred images in his photography, which he did achieve. Um, he set himself a brief and he did achieve that and produced some beautiful work and they accepted him uh, straight away onto that course. Um, there was no conditions, he had an un unconditional offer. So yeah, thank you, Sandra. So yeah, so um, I hope uh, guys, that you've really got um, sort of a really good broad overview of the course from these slides. Uh, I'm sure that Sadaf and Gabriel can answer questions better than me about, about the course. Um, I'm hoping that they'll give us some testimonials as well for our websites. <laughs> uh, yes, so I was thinking that just right now, thinking I'm taking that slide down because you guys are our testimonials. So it's literally <laughs> pretty much over to you now in terms of you know talking to us a little bit more about your experience of the course. And you know, we have a pre unprecedented times as well, unfortunately. But now you are back in the college. I mean, would you like to? talk a little bit or if there are any questions please raise your hands and i will you know uh, allow you to speak perhaps even maybe we can see you and and we could have a conversation as to you know what was it like for you what was uh, the experience that you cherished the, mo the most i also understand you went to the uh, exhibition last week uh, as the as london opened up so yes. tell us a little bit more of what's happening thanks we went to the banksy exhibition last week didn't we guys do you want to say something about that and also about your experience about being back in the college gabriel do you want to go first yeah i mean we've had an amazing experience last week. I mean, we got to work in the photo studio. We got to learn the lighting and and how to. We did some test shoots and things like that. Um, we went to the Banksy exhibition, which was amazing. Um, just being able to get to see everybody and actually just get to experience it and go out um, after everything was amazing. Um, and obviously taking pictures and seeing some of the artwork, which I'd never seen before, was a really good insight. And I know everyone in the the course really liked it as well. Thanks, Gabriel. Staff, do you want to say something? I'm sure um, the sort of experience back in college was really amazing. I mean, it's like once in a lifetime opportunity to be studying at Condé Nast, especially as an international student. Having to go from lockdown back in college was just a lot of fun, very exciting and totally like lived up to my expectations coming in from another country. So if international students if you have any questions for me as well as my journey and how like I sort of sort of like went from another country coming to London here to study and how Connie Nas has made my journey so much easier feel free to ask me any questions. So Dan, can you can you just say a little bit about where you 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 plan to progress to after the course as well? Um, yes, so um, from this course, I actually came in with a really strong mind that I wanted to do design, but from this course, I actually got really interested in creative direction. So I submitted one of my projects as to LCF, and now I will be progressing to the BA at London College of Fashion for creative direction. Well done, Sadaf. What about you, Gabriel? Where are you progressing next? Um, so yeah, I applied... Um, well, I, I came into the course knowing that I kind of liked creative direction. So I also applied for creative direction at Instituto Marangoni um, on the BA for three years, um, which I got accepted to. So I'll be studying there in October once this course is finished. Congratulations, Gabrielle. You must be super excited. <laughs> yes, I am. Thank you. Congratulations to both of you. Honestly, that's amazing. I mean, obviously, I don't want to see you go, obviously. <laughs> you must keep in touch. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's important just so that you know that this foundation is obviously fantastic preparation for our BA, but as you can see from the other students who just completed or are about to complete, you know, they're going off to, to other institutions, uh, to other degrees, and, and that, you know, the, 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 this program did help them to achieve that. So, you know, don't, don't think that this is just um, leading directly into our degree, um, not only, it's uh, it can help you to get to any other creative degree. 
Yes, I think, you know, I think you can go on to the BA Fashion Communication at Cons in Ash as you want to, because it's a fantastic course. And we, you know, um, and I'm sure that Gabriel and Sadaf would have obviously loved to have done that as well. Um, but it wasn't running next year, was it? Because we're doing a completely new, brand new, exciting uh, BA. So, but it will be there for you when you, when you join us. Great. I just wanted to check if Sashmita is still here with us because there is a, a, a question from her. So I just want to make sure we answer to someone who is still mm. with us. Um, but Georgia just asked if I haven't studied art for levels, will it affect my application? No, I think you've just got to have a passion for fashion. Sorry, sorry, excuse the pen. But as long as you, as long as you are absolutely know that fashion is where you want to be, this is the course for you. Um, you don't necessarily have to have a portfolio to come onto this course because you you are taught all the skills in on the foundation course and how to build a really strong creative portfolio. So don't worry about not being brilliant at art or having the art um, you know, background. Uh, as long as you're passionate and you, you know this is what you want to do, I think you'll really enjoy the course. Would you agree with me, Sadaf and Gabriel on that? Which yes, is I would, I mean, I've studied at um, other colleges in the UK because I'm a UK student, so I have a, a pretty good perspective on comparison, really, to Condé Nast to other colleges, and it really is, I mean, like no other, it really is amazing the, the, the communication that you have and the relationship that you have with all the staff, and it's so close-knit, it's like a family and all the other students, it really is, it really is great. So if you have any questions, if you're from the UK or um, anything like that, if you want to know um a levels etc you can ask me oh thank you gabriel you're so so friendly so lovely <laughs> and what lovely words we need to we need to write this down agatha <laughs> it's all recorded <laughs> <laughs> okay has anybody got any questions they want um, to ask i just brought in georgia because georgia was the one who asked us the question about having uh, the, the kind of background but i was wondering if there is anything else georgia you wanted to ask uh, you know you can unmute yourself and ask us more questions feel free just let us know <laughs> maybe not okay uh, jackie you have just asked james if uh, if you could visit us in august so um our college tours are at the moment closed because we have literally just returned to the college uh, a week ago it's the first week back isn't it so uh first of all obviously we need to welcome back our students and 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 see what's allowed we are hoping that from the 21st of june everything opens up and we are free to roam around but you just never know so to answer your question jackie it might be possible but pro probably we can only confirm that closer to the day. Um, so perhaps maybe uh, you said that you are at the end of August in London. So perhaps somewhere, I don't know, middle of August, we could touch base again and just see if uh, if we could arrange that. And we will be very gladly, you know, show you around and uh, meet us and, and just talk to you face to face. So I hope that answer your questions. I'll just add to that. There is a, a it's not the same as coming to the college obviously to have a look around but there is a, a video tour on our youtube page so absolutely have a look there because that gives you a sense of what the college is, is like to walk around um and some of the activities that take place there so definitely have a look at that in the first instance right um I, have i missed any questions i'm not sure if i have missed any i don't think so I think we've answered all of the questions. Um, there were you have us here, you have the students here. Don't feel shy, please ask away. Um, do you guys have any, uh, I mean, you mentioned a little bit your background, Gabrielle, but what about you, Sadaf? What was your kind of journey before the college, uh, Condonas College and before starting the foundation with us? What did you do? What is your background? And how did you decide to do the foundation with us? 
Okay, so um, I was born in Australia. I studied in Pakistan. I actually studied in the American system, so switching to British system. Um, if through the college, it wasn't such a big shock because, you know, they made it so easy for me, explained everything properly, you know, so I wasn't completely in, in a whole new world here. But um, I did a lot of art in high school, like I'm fresh out of high school. This is my first college degree, like college course. Um, I did an AP in studio art. I did photography and I did have a lot of background in art as long as, as well as all the other academic psychology and all of that. So if you are like a little afraid that you don't have the art skills or the art background, don't be, the course really focuses on basic art skills, photography skills, digital skills in the first term. So don't worry, you will not be, you won't, to like get confused or anything um and i yeah so i just came from pakistan so they made everything really easy if you're a little scared as an international student or you're thinking of coming from another country don't worry the college is very nice they'll help you with anything you need can i ask you sadaf where is it that you stay in london then do you stay uh, do you share do you rent your own place or do you have family um, in terms of accommodations, um, I rent an apartment with my two other sisters who are studying here in London. And I actually heard about this course from a friend who was last year in the foundation course. So she did help, <sighs> sorry, uh, she did help me a lot with sort of going around the college, showing me where it was. So um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I just wanted to expand a little bit more on that. Um, did you, because I don't know if you guys are aware, we have a, a, a accommodation, kind of closed accommodation group on Facebook. So if anyone here has applied, has been accepted and, and is looking for accommodation, please request uh, to join the group because you can actually speak to other uh, students on, in that group uh, and perhaps look for shared accommodations or you can ask past students if maybe they will be passing on the apartment or give you some tips. We also have accommodation information on our website. Um, uh, so I, I, I think, I mean, Sadaf, I'm not sure if you are still here. So um, I guess you had a little bit of a help from, from another past students of ours and your friends uh, in that respect. I guess, Gabrielle, you being based in the UK, you, do you travel to the, to the college or you are in London? Where are you? <laughs> Um, no, I was going to move down, but because of COVID, I just decided to travel um, and the trains have been absolutely bliss because no one's been traveling. So, um, no, they're amazing. So, I've, I've, yeah, I travel. It's about an hour and a half from where I live in Birmingham. Oh, so, wow. So you travel all the way from Birmingham? Yeah. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. Sorry, I think one of our attendees wanted to speak. I think Bora had a question just a second ago. Um, if you still have it, um, I don't know if Sandra you could allow her to yeah. speak. Hello, I was hi. Hi, Bora. Hi. Um, I was just writing my question right now, but um, anyway. So, uh, first of all, I like the presentation you you just did in the beginning and the work of the student. And I hope my English is understandable as, as it's not my first language. Um, Very good. I have studied art, let's say, quite all my life. <laughs> Even now, I'm currently doing my master on design. Um, I'm Albanian, so, but I'm not living in Albania, I'm living in South Africa. So I'm doing my master online and I have to go back in, in two weeks to give my end years exams. Um, I was just looking because um, fashion is something like I'm not a um, very fashionable person, but I like to work with fashion. I, um, I create my own jewelries, even though I like basic kind of stuff. I don't use um, gold or silver or whatever, but um, I just enjoy the process. So I was looking online um, of uh, fashion schools that are not too long because um, the, the, the bachelor and master that I'm doing is like three years and two years. So then I found out about the uh, Vogue Foundation and, uh, and their program. 
So I thought it's quite interesting. And that was more the reason to participate and to see what was offering. Um, what I would like to know is during this uh, period that we are in a pandemic and whatsoever, um, do you offer also lessons online? As um, I already heard that uh, last year, the students were working all over the world. Mm. So do you still do that or that was only for that period? Like, do you offer, for example, I, I'm not like currently I'm not working. So I know that I cannot afford the trip to London plus, uh, plus the visas and the stuff. So don't want to mess there. Mm. Um, but I'm really curious if um, if you do like the, the teaching online, if it's possible or if you plan to do. And also uh, another thing that I think not only me, but also other people would be interested about if um, the college does offer scholarship or if there is a possibility for scholarships. Okay, um, sorry, I went too long, but anyway, <laughs> that's where the question no. I was curious. Yeah. No, it's great. Um, I, I can answer it if that's okay with everyone. Yeah. Um, so um, we, Bora, we did we did teach over the last year um, mainly online due due to COVID, but actually the the foundation course is is really a face to face course, and so. Uh, whereas at the time we had to move it online, we we will as soon as possible deliver it on campus. Um, what we are, however, considering, you know, we, we do have a number of online courses that you could check out. Those are short courses, uh, six weeks long. But um, as you said, you know, since maybe you don't have much experience around fashion, that could be a nice um, taster for you in, you know, in a kind of a short uh, course online. And they're, they're really good. And they're from areas of like fashion and image, which is very much about the, you know, how fashion and image and culture have been influencing each other. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a really nice kind of history and, and a lot of kind of theory behind it. Um, and then you have the creative direction, which is very hands-on. You have also the uh, uh, producing, um, creating a content, digital content course. You have a course on, on the um, uh, fashion and future of brands, which is very much actually around kind of uh, the future of, of branding and the communication with it and how, how the brands in the future would be building their own brands and what sort of channels they might be using and stuff like that. And I feel I'm forgetting one more, which is the fashion styling, pretty straightforward. Um, so I, I would advise you trying those if there's something you'd like to do with us. Uh, we are looking to potentially in the future, maybe next year already, uh, design a full online uh, MA. So not the not the uh, not the foundation yet, but we're looking to do the MA, and perhaps that would something um, you know depending what would be the focus of it and I suppose the admission criteria, that could be something you could look into. Um, and now the scholarships, <laughs> again, that is something that we we're currently working very hard on to get a bigger pool of scholarships. But as it stands now, we actually don't have scholarships for international students to join our um, degree courses or, or foundation program. Um, but there are, you know, there, there are some other, I suppose, opportunities for you to maybe look at professional development loans, um, though not sure if that would be covering the foundation. Um, but yeah, it is something that we're working on, but unfortunately at this stage, we do not have uh, scholarships for international students. Right, um, thank you. I hope that answered your questions. So a lot in a lot's been planned in the pipeline uh, that you should keep your eye on. But um, for now, Bora, perhaps best option is to look at some of those um, online courses, the six online courses that we have. They run quite often throughout the year, uh, and I think they're a really good introduction both to the subject as well as to the college. Thanks. Can I, can I just add to that, Bora, as well? Because I'm thinking a bit more from an academic perspective, the academic progression, and from the admissions side. If that you're already doing a BA program and a master's program, um, 
I, I think that actually the foundation is probably not the right course for you. Um, you'd probably be better looking at the online courses, as Agatha said, um, to really kind of branch out and explore the fashion industry and all its different facets. Um, but then maybe next year, look at the MA program, whether that's an online one or um, one of the in-person ones. And hopefully by that point, we will have scholarships set up. Um, but if you're already at that kind of master's postgraduate level of education, um, I think that the foundation might just be a, a step back for you, really. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right, James. Um, I think that's uh, that's a good point because there's no point going back to the, I suppose, lower academic level if you're already there. And we do have some conversion masters. So masters are specifically designed for people who haven't had much experience or knowledge in fashion. Um, and, and yeah, so, so there are options. Uh, you don't have to start your education in the subject area from the very, very beginning, um, if that makes sense. <clears throat> okay, um, we have a, a, a question from Anna, Anna Davies. Uh, I think you are now on mute, so go Yeah, on. I am. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, sure. Yeah, perfect. Okay, hi, everyone. Um, hi. Yeah, I just thought the beginning was amazing, actually. Like, it was so cool to look at everyone's work. Like, some stuff that they produce is so cool um but I just have two questions basically I'm at the moment I'm 17 and I'm in the lower sixth so I'm studying a b-tech in fashion design and production and then photography which is actually an eight level <laughs> and then music b-tech so I'm quite b-tech based because I'm like super sort of practical creative person so that sort of works for my learning style better um, and obviously I want to come and do the foundation and then probably stay on for the BA in communication, depending on how the foundation goes. But yeah, because I, I really like Condé Nast, so that's probably what I'm going to do. But um, what I want to know is my tutor at school is kind of banging on at me because she wants me to start preparing my portfolio. But you said I don't need a portfolio. So what do I need to prepare on then to get in? So um, I think initially, yeah, I mean, the standard requ entry requirements don't mean that you don't need to have a portfolio. We don't ask for people to have a portfolio. And as Fiona said earlier, the course is really designed to kind of get you to experiment in all the different design facets and different mediums and work out what, what fits you and what's going to help you communicate your ideas and, and move forward within the fashion industry. That being said, if you have stuff, we're, we're more than happy to look at it at the application stage. We really like to get a sense of who you are, what's important to you, um, how you communicate ideas and themes and, and processes, whatever it is that you're, you're sending us, um, whether that's examples of written work, um, creative work, a combination of both is always really good. Um, and it could be that you've got an Instagram feed that's really kind of creative and, and stylistic and, and really kind of directed. Um, so anything like that is, is, you're more than welcome to submit and we're more than happy to take a look at. Um, so yes, yeah, so in, in a sense, your, your advisor there is correct. We, most places will need one. Um, and if you have something or a few examples of work that you'd like us to have a look at, we're, we're absolutely fine to look at that. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. But I was sort of thinking of bringing some fashion sketchbooks and then um, photography lookbooks. I, I basically at the moment I'm working on personal investigation and photography, which is basically when you get to choose a topic to study and you get to do shoots around that topic. So I chose to do identity and fashion and how like self-identity can be expressed through fashion, i.e. makeup and clothes. So I'm at the moment I'm studying that. And then in fashion, I'm studying the history of fashion. So I was probably thinking of showing my sketchbook once I finished the history of fashion topic, and then my lookbook once I finished my identity project in photography. So I thought the variation of fashion photography and fashion design and history is quite a good variation because it shows my, obviously my different skill set across the board. Definitely, Anna, and I think you've already sort of, you know, you're finding your sort of creative, your inner creative, aren't you? Sounds like you're experimenting right. already. Um, I know, I, I love like creative direction. Yeah. Seeing the work that you're creating, and um, I really hope you come and join us. You know, definitely, that's definitely the plan, if you like me, because I could be horrible, you may not want to take me. <laughs> I could all, my work may not be good enough, I may like be talking like this but actually when you say it, it could be awful so <laughs> don't, you know, don't get your hopes up <laughs> but thank you so much thank you anna thank you so much so there is a question from nadia and that's for sadaf uh, i don't know if you saw the question sadaf 
Uh, I saw the question. I'll be more than happy to answer it. Um, so, so sorry, before we... you answer, I maybe read it out. I'm not sure if everybody can see it. So I'm studying design at Mexico, but I really want to apply, apply for the course. And so that was a difficult going to Condenas. And I'm kind of nervous about the language barrier and situations where I know maybe not in the same page as other students. Okay, so in terms of being an international student and applying, it does depend whether you're doing a direct application or you're applying through UCAS. Um, so I did a direct application, so um, they were really helpful, you know, they asked for whatever documents they needed, and they just asked for a personal statement from me, and I opted to submit a portfolio. It was an option, it wasn't required. Um, so I can't say easy or hard because it's not really that way. Um, I could definitely say that the college made the journey really clear and very easy for you. So don't worry about the application process. The college does a really good job at helping you step by step. And in terms of language barrier, um, I don't think so you should worry at all. Um, of course, you have to take your IELTS like I did um, or whatever English um, sort of requirement test you have in your country. So um, in terms of London's a very diverse place, you know, language barrier won't be such a big issue. You will always find someone. But yeah, you don't worry about anything. It's pretty, it's pretty easy when you get here. I know it's very daunting looking at it, but the college makes it very easy for you. Um, there is also the second part of the question. I might not be in the same page as other students. I think our students are so individualistic. I don't think I've met to the same students that can be very eccentric, extroverts, introverts, all sorts of characters, very colorful characters, very timid, very bold, very outspoken, as well as, as very quiet. Uh, so in, the res in that respect, I don't know if you guys want to say anything about your peers, about yourselves. I mean, I mean, you know, Gabriel looks very, like, as you say, very plain now, but if you see sometimes Gabriel in the college, it's, it's just such a colorful character and you saw his illustrations. So pretty much how Gabriel sometimes comes to the college. <laughs> um, sure, I'd like to give my input on that. In terms of same page, no one on this course is the same page. Everyone has their own difference and own aspirations. That's what's so special about this course. Not everyone has to be at the same level of skills. Everyone has variation of skills. Like I might not be as good as photography as Gabriel or someone might not be as well, as good as drawing or anything, but that's besides the point. Um, yeah, so don't worry about everyone is so different. I can speak for everyone on the course. We are all very different personalities. If you see us in a group, you can clearly see what personality each person has. So everyone's very different, everyone's work's very different. No one ever has the same work. Like we are all given the same task, but everyone has completely different outcomes. Thank you. Gabriel, did you want to, to add anything to that? I mean, one of the best thing, I come from a very small town in, in Birmingham. And I mean, I came um, to London and to Condé Nast and I've met so many people and from different places that I never would have maybe have met before um, and I've learned so much and um, even all that we have so many different personalities and we all just come together and work as a team and it's it's amazing to see and we all get on um, no arguments as of yet <laughs> but we, we genuinely we really do all get on um, and I really don't worry about about that because it's it's a really um, exclusive experience I don't think you could kind of find it anywhere else that close-knit kind of feel um, which is what's so special about Condé Nast. I think that's true Gabriel and Nadia I would say that you know everybody because they're such they're not huge class sizes it's not like going into a university where they've got like 40 50 students looking at you that they're I don't know what it is but it's almost like there's an intimacy in the class and the group and everybody in the foundation has really bonded so well um and they've all got their whatsapp group they're all very friendly they're working in groups and collaborating on projects so yeah i wouldn't worry about that because i found that you know you play to your strengths and then obviously you can if you're working in a group you can rely on someone else's strengths and then play to your strengths within that group 
So don't worry about maybe not being of, um, you know, worrying, don't worry about what your competitor's doing. It's all about you and your progress and your journey and how you're developing, where you start and where you end up and the skills that you learn along that journey. Okay, so I hope that helps you a little bit. Also, maybe just to add, uh, 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 this year's cohort is uh, is quite small. We've lost a few students throughout the COVID as well uh, because they couldn't uh, join us anymore. How many people do you have this year, Fiona? 11, 11. And 11. It was 14 last year. Yeah. Exactly. So for the coming year, the September 2021, we have already 15 people who have booked and, and paid for the course, uh, either deposit or in full, depending how they wanted to do it. And uh, the, the bookings are still open until obviously almost middle of September. So we actually might hit 20, 25 people mark even. Um, so the, the cohort is growing, but it's still in the, that kind of smaller number, I would say, where it's quite intimate, it's very nurturing, and, and, and it's, it's a small group. Yeah, I think that's what's lovely about Content Us, actually, because it does feel a bit like a family. Everybody's very well, you know, everybody's felt, it feels welcome as soon as they walk through the building. You know, you're addressed by your first names by everybody. You know, Marcia's on reception is always welcome. <laughs> you know, it is really, you, you've always got someone to approach in terms of if you've got a query or a question about something. Whereas sometimes I think the disadvantage of larger universities, you don't have that personal sort of touch. It's, it's a, lot, a lot less intimate in terms of the, the relationship. So yeah, I, I think the students do feel nurtured and supported at Conte Nast. Well, at least that's what Gabriel and Sadaf seem to be saying today, which is great. <laughs> Okay, uh, so there was a question from Jackie. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, James. I kind of replied, uh, Jackie is asking what are the academic requirements for the college application process? And she's asking about SAT, ACT and GPA. Do you want to add anything to what I've answered, which are our st standard and requirements? Um, no, I mean, without knowing exactly where you're from or what kind of education you've done up until now, it's difficult to answer. But generally, I mean, that sounds maybe it's a US college system or, or education system. Mm -hmm. um, generally, we're looking for high school level education. So normally a high school diploma. Um, if you've got higher than that, absolutely, we'll, we'll accept those sorts of applications as well. Um, but generally, we're looking for um, a high school education completion. Um. Did it answer your question, Jackie? I just unmuted to you so you can speak to us if you would like to, uh, um, if you want to ex expand a bit more about your background. Um, hi, yes, Hello. I'm in high school right now um, and starting and starting to look at colleges. Um, and, and this is something that, that I'm super interested in. Fantastic. So I guess what I mean, the best process for that would be if you, you know, if you are thinking if that's your time of, of applying is to submit your paperwork, your transcript, and then James usually looks at, looks at it. So how do you guys, how do you, James, deal with international qualifications? Because there could be other people here. So what's the process here? Yeah, I mean, we had some conversations earlier going on around the um, International Baccalaureate Diploma and, and the Middle Years Program. So yeah, I mean, we get obviously set us from Pakistan, her education is done there. We've got people coming from all over the place. So everyone will have something different potentially. Um, so yeah, once you submit your uh, mm -hmm. certificate or your transcript, if we don't recognize it or we can't see instantly what it is, we can check that with an authorizing body effectively, which will tell us whether it's an equivalent to a UK qualification at this level or that level. Um, and that will tell us whether or not that's acceptable or not. So. Um, in the first instance, if, uh, I would say just submit an application with whatever you have at the moment and we can look into that further at our end. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Is there anything else you'd like to ask us? Um, don't worry if you don't. I'm not putting you on the spot. <laughs> Thank you. So we have also Georgia. Uh, I'm into Georgia. Georgia has got a question. Georgia, can you hear us? Hello? I don't think we can hear you, Georgia. Georgia, 
George has just put in the chat that she her mic isn't isn't working. Okay, so I will read out uh, the question. So Georgia has got a small business shop on Instagram where she sells clothes uh, she makes herself and she is asking if she should link this into her personal statement or insert photos of, of, of that into her portfolio as part of her application. Sounds great. Yes. <laughs> yes. So yes, uh, the answer to that, Georgia, is yes, definitely. Uh, any form of, I mean, anything that shows you as a person, as a, as an individual, uh, we we welcome to see, to to look at, and to to receive as part of your application and portfolio. Yeah, and for those who are looking to hopefully submit an application, um, there there isn't an interview um, process as, as part of this course. So really our only introduction to you is going to be through your application. So that's why it's really important that your personal statement really conveys to us who you are, why you're choosing this course, um, your career goals potentially, and what you're looking to do in the future. So anything that you can submit that will supplement and enhance that, whether it's a portfolio or examples of work um, or a link to a blog that you keep or a website that you manage, anything like that is always going to help us to um, just get a sense of who you are and, and, and again, what's important to you and how you communicate ideas to, to people. Great, thank you guys. Um, is there anyone else who'd like to raise their hands uh, to ask a question or drop it in the chat? I just wanted to ask uh, you guys, uh, Sadaf and Gabriel, kind of like, you know, any word of advice that you might give anybody who would like to come and study in the college. I mean, what's the, the things that, you know, you were scared about and then when you join us actually didn't mean anything and what you have learned in that year with us apart from COVID obviously restrictions which was very unfortunate but can you give any word of wisdom? <laughs> um, sure I can give like a few little tips. Um, just time management especially after the pandemic we're so used to online schools to so just make sure you're on top of all your work there. I'm not gonna lie there is quite a bit of work so please like just be on top of all of it. And in terms of anything to be scared of, like Gabriel, I'm just gonna re reiterate what he said. Um, Connie Nast is like a family. So if you're a little scared, you know, coming to college, especially out of high school, um, you know, Connie Nast is a big family. So don't be scared. It's, it's I swear it's not that bad. <laughs> I mean, um, for me, my, my main points would be um, when applying, I mean, if you have a portfolio or anything like that you want to add on, go for it. I mean, you, that gives you your chance to stand out from the crowd um, and push yourself. Um, I think that's, and you have so many opportunities at Condé Nast to do that. Um, it is a lot of work, but it's amazing if you love fashion, um, if you love just being in, even on Zoom, it's so interesting to find out how it all goes on behind the scenes and get that really great perspective from a great teachers um, that you email them and email you back the same day, which that doesn't sometimes happen with some universities. So um, it really is. It's amazing. I couldn't praise it anymore. But yeah, <laughs> I meant to I meant to say um, I meant to say, actually, Gabriel and Sadaf, you actually interviewed Michael Christensen, didn't you? The um, editor in chief, the ex editor in chief of uh, GQ Australia. Do you want to quickly say something about that? And you wrote some, you wrote an article about it, didn't you, Sadaf? Um, yeah, sure. It was such a surreal experience. I never thought that in my foundation year I'd be interviewing uh, editor in chief of a magazine. So, Connie, that's what's so special about Connie and us, that we have so many of those opportunities. To, to like speak to industry professionals like never in my wildest dreams that I think when I was coming to this college that I would be like co like co-hosting an interview with Gabriel and of course interviews are always nerve-wracking but I feel like it was so much fun just to speak and ask questions and be inquisitive so if Gabriel wants to add anything to that <laughs> yeah I mean it was an amazing experience and as well we got to sit in on a press conference for Stella McCartney as well a couple of weeks ago which was absolutely amazing having to you know listen to um, questions from Forbes magazine and Vogue and talk about her, her winter collection it really was amazing it really the experience and hosting as well and asking those questions with Sadaf was 
so nerve wracking, but it was a great experience. And even during COVID, it was it was really it was really great. And um, something I'd also like to add, if anyone like loves journalism, I wrote a couple of articles. Conde Nast College has a blog. So if you really love journalism, you know, you can check out the blog beforehand and th you always have so many opportunities to write articles. That's true. So uh, I should have mentioned that at some point. So um, we like to expose your work uh, if it's through Instagram. I know you're quite active with us on Instagram, Gabrielle. We, you know, treat your stories, retweet them. We ask students to write reviews, uh, articles, you know, observations, analysis of, of what they are studying or seeing, or, or, you know, if you guys actually went to see the Bansky exhibition, if any of you wants to write something about it for our blog, then by all means. And, and that's what we do. We, you know, we like to show you the life of the college and student life through the eyes of our co uh, students, uh, because I think that's the best and that actually represents your experience with us. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Um, um, we have a question from, uh, we have a hand raised from Tolua. So go, go, go ahead, Tolua. Hi, sorry, I'm a bit nervous. Um, I'm actually, I don't know if I'd be classed as a mature student or, but I graduated at the end of 2019 um, from Coventry University in interior architecture and design. And as much as I've enjoyed my experience there, I, <laughs> I miss the fashion world. It is my heart, it is my soul. And I really want to come back. I did study um, fashion design, not fashion design, art and fashion design in um, my a level. So I'm 24 now. And I, my question is kind of directed towards um, uh, Mr. James there. Um, I was wondering, do I, you did mention earlier, I know that fashion, if you have a, not to lower yourself almost, to lower yourself back, backwards to a foundation program, if you've already got that, um, already, if you've already got that knowledge. So would you recommend, because I know I'm more so interested in styling and fashion design. So would you recommend me kind of looking at your courses that way than going to the uh, foundation program? Yeah, and I mean, it's going to be a personal choice. It's, we have some students who, who absolutely want to, want to take that step back and really kind of go back to grassroots and explore their kind of creative, um, their creative selves and work out what's, what's going to work for them and where their, their future lies. Um, so we do have students that do that. But for the most part, I would say if, you're, if you've already done your, B, is it a BA degree you've done? or a, Yes, it is a BA, BA, yeah. So if you've done that already, the, the, the foundation is really designed to prepare people and prepare a portfolio yeah. for a degree course, an undergraduate course. So that it's it's going to be down to you to weigh up what the purpose of you doing the course is. Right. Um, my suggestion would be maybe do something like our summer course, um, which yeah. is a real taster and an exploration of the fashion industry and all the different facets and variations of it um, to really give you a sense of how the fashion industry works outside of fashion design and garment production. So everything else around that you can have a look at. Um, or look at the online courses and, and start to pick, pick and choose which ones are going to be relevant to you. Um, but predominantly, you'd, you'd be looking really at doing an MA with us. And I think Agatha mentioned earlier, we have our conversion MA, such as fashion communication, um, which is really designed to help people come into the fashion industry from whether they've done a science degree or whether they've done a law degree. It, they, have, they don't have to have any kind of arts or creative background, um, but they, they're coming in to learn about the fashion industry at that postgraduate level. So my my suggestion to you would be look at postgraduate but look at the the kind of shorter courses as well to really dip your toes into the fashion industry again and kind of work out what 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 you're going to enjoy and what where the career where your career could lead you in the future okay it's funny you mentioned that because um as well as um studying interior architecture so i've kind of found myself in um media regarding um radio presenting so i'm a presenter for bbc so i kind of i've gone that way I don't know how I've got that way but I've got that way and I'm just starting off a career so you mentioned about your um, communication course I would really love to is that all online as well for me to find as yeah, well absolutely. have a look at the postgraduate section of our website and then there's the um, fashion communication MA which um, I was going to say anyone could come onto it for anyone who's done any type of post uh, undergraduate degree can come onto it. it doesn't have to be arts based um, we've got an entrepreneurship degree which you could look at MA degree um, so have a look through them and see what kind of ring things out to you a little bit on what what feels like it might be a good fit for you um but in the meantime like i said earlier look at the online courses so things like um content creation we have a, a short course on content creation if you're working in that kind of field of, of 
digital content creation anyway, you could look at branching out and looking at that within the fashion context. So really start to think about what you want to do in the fashion industry, really, and start to see where our courses might fit into that. Okay, sorry, I just I'm just picking all your brains. <laughs> um, no, I apologize. We are here for you, so I'll fire away. Um, I'm I just I think I'm just kind of finding my balance because I know I love my media world. I I've fallen into it and I've fallen in love with it, and but I also do love designing. I did aspire at one point to be the next Alexander McQueen. So it's just kind of finding <laughs> that kind of balance between the two because I wouldn't want to exclude any part, but. I just I wouldn't know where to because I my mom is kind of on my head she's like what are we do and I said I want to go into my media but I don't want to exclude that part of me because that is my creative essence and who I am so you mentioned about your postgraduate degrees um is there any requirements you would specifically need from me because I did come from an architecture background let alone a media background so would you want anything specifically from me yeah it I mean it will depend on the course that you're looking at so each MA has its own set of entry requirements so um, off the top of my head, we've got fashion communication, um, entrepreneurship, and luxury brand management and strategy. So they're the kind of businessy side of, of our MA programs. Um, and they don't require any kind of arts-based degree um, or portfolio to come onto the courses. Um, and then we have things like creative direction, fashion styling, uh, fashion journalism, um, which are kind of more creative and, and do require a portfolio. And generally, we like to see some sort of background in that. But you, you have a, an architectural degree, so you have a design-based degree, um, which we would absolutely consider. So again, it's, it's you looking at that. I would say after, the, after you've finished today, have a look at the website and really read through the MA programmes um, and see which one fits in. I mean, if you're looking at design, we don't do fashion design, but what we do um, is, our, is our entrepreneurship MA programme, which marries up the kind of business and starting off... A, a bit your own business um which could absolutely be a, a fashion design business that you, you want to launch so yeah i, I would say well. <laughs> first of all and then once you've done that obviously come back to us if you've got any questions or want some more advice um and we've got our, our youtube page which has all of our kind of past ma program um q a sessions and uh, open days that you can have a look at as well Thank you very much. That's brilliant. That's all my questions done. That's absolutely perfect. Um, is there a way of getting um, in contact with you guys personally after this? If I have any more questions? Sure. I'm, I'm just going to drop an email address. Uh, so all of us actually are behind that email. Um, but also I got to drop the link in the questions and answer as well for, to the MA courses. So if you wanted to have a look at that. Yes, that'd be brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay, information is content of college. Okay, I think I've done it correctly. So the email address is there as well for you if you wanted to, you know, write to us. Thank you so so much. I'm really really appreciative of you taking so much time. No problem. That's 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 why we're here. Right. Um, I was wondering if there is any more questions from anybody and. Uh, um, Yes, Anna is back. Okay, Anna, here it is. <laughs> Wait, um, hello again. Hello. Um, as you were just talking about the short courses with her, um, I don't think I can do a short course when I'm 17, can I? Because I was thinking, I was wanting to do something this summer, ideally. Um, just obviously this summer will be the end of my lower sixth, and then I'll be going into upper sixth in September. And then obviously for my upper sixth, I'll be preparing to go onto the foundation. But this summer I wanted to do a sort of short summer course. Do you do those for someone of my age? So how old are you at the moment, Anna? You said you were 17 earlier, is that all right? Yeah, yeah. So you can look at doing our Vogue Teen Weekend, um, which is taking place, I think, in July, off the top of my head. Um, is that online though, or in person? That's an online. online. Oh, that's such a shame though. But I, could, I guess it's still as good, isn't it? It's just not quite the same. Yeah, I think, I think our students who came onto it last year enjoyed it more and we, we were able to del deliver a lot more than we were, were in person. So, I mean, it may be that we continue to do it online. We haven't really decided yet, but yeah, there's, cool. there's that one that you can look at and you can look at any of the online courses because you need to be 16 or over to do those. Yeah. Um, for all of the other courses, like the summer course and the week-long programmes, um, you do need to be 18 academically and that, that's based yeah. on, the, on your age on the 1st of September each year. So... For the rest of this year up until the end of august you're going to be considered a 17 year old um, student yeah yeah yeah. so 
yeah, maybe I'll do that one in July because there's going to be no point me doing one when I'm 18 because I'll just come do the foundation anyway. So I wouldn't need to do that. Yeah, exactly. And, and the Vogue Team Weekend is a really good way of kind of getting a taster and, and an idea. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I want to do. And, yeah. teach. Um, and, and our students do really enjoy that when they come onto that course. Very cool. Thank you very much. No problem. And I just drop you links as well in the chat so you can actually pick them up uh, to see uh, the online courses. They actually start in June uh, rather yeah. than July. So uh, okay. just making you aware the the Vogue, Vogue Teen Weekend is two days uh, kind of event, which is 11th, 12th of July. Okay, okay no problem. Right. Um, I think that's it. Uh, if there is anyone else, raise your hand now. <laughs> uh, but I think that the, I hope we answered all the questions. I hope that session was useful. And and um, if you have any more questions, as we mentioned, please drop us an email admissions, uh, explore the website, follow us on Instagram. That's the best play, place, I think, to learn about students' life and what our students are up to. There is always some sort of report from uh, from some sort of activity. So it's the best place to learn what it's like to be a NAST college student, I, I guess. And uh, on that occasion, I would like to thank you, Gabrielle and, and Sadaf for joining us today. And I really appreciate your time. And I'm so looking forward to the exhibition and seeing your work. And I hope uh, we can be there present as a staff because I know we not all of us can be in at the moment. Um, but I will be dropping to the college in June. So I'm hoping to see you in person. If you are around in, in, in there, I will say hello. And uh, thank you, Fiona, James, and Agatha for, for your time today. I hope uh, you know we can um, meet some of you uh, who join us today in the college from September when we start the foundation course intake again. On that, no, thank you and goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.